government has big plans to professionalize the public sector. Part of that is a new policy to keep director generals in place for 10 years. Uh, they say this will ensure greater stability and insulate the system from political interference. Uh, let's speak to uh, Acting Public Service and Administration Minister. It's uh, Tulas Inhesi joining us uh, this morning. Uh, Minister, I always appreciate uh, your time in joining us. So we're going to talk about uh, the budget speech a little bit later, but the professionalization of the public sector. There are critics, Minister, saying that this is just an admission that the public sector is not professionally run. What would you make of that comment? Good morning. Morning. Well, uh, there are pockets of excellence in the public service, but there are areas where there are failures. And uh, this has been reflected, and it's part of the NDP plan, which has argued that the issue of professionalization of the public service is very important. So we are responding to that particular plan. But also, you know, the president has also pronounced there were certain critical issues which were raised about the professionalization of the public service by the Zondo Commission. And all we're trying to do is to strengthen the public service, the leadership in the public service, and um, also try and improve its service delivery in various respects. That's the intention. And when do you think this could take place if this is passed, if this is put into a framework, uh, and if it's uh, implemented as well? How quickly, how quickly a change do you think us as the public will start seeing at various public services around the country? Well, it depends. It, it depends on the, um, on the aspects. There are various aspects to this. Some of the aspects, for instance, if you're talking about uh, one of the critical areas which has been decided by cabinet is the issue of uh, extending the, the tenure of the teachers to 10 years. That uh, might need a directive on how it has to be done because there are certain prerequisites which have to be followed. Uh, amongst others, we're talking about the PSC has to put a pool of experts uh, in a particular area who are going to be part of the interviews working with the ministers and the ministers can be able to choose from those experts and we um, want to simply extend there are a number of issues which have to be considered and we have to come up with the, the new performance assessment helped by the experts in that particular area the hr experts in those areas some of them are already ongoing if you're talking about people going uh, through particular courses which are offered by the national school of government those are already ongoing so some of them are implemented some of them will come with directives some of them might need uh, us to amend the public uh, service act and uh, we'll do so and uh, some of them it will just be uh, i think by directives from the from the president uh, i do want to talk about finances and uh, wages and strikes in a moment uh, minister before i let you go i want to ask though when we also talk about the professionalization of the public sector one of the other concerns as well is the pre-entry recruitment and selection if we were to professionalize the public service there's uh, some quarters who are concerned, Minister, that current staff are going to be kicked out because they simply aren't qualified to be professionals in the jobs they currently hold. Could we see job losses if we're to professionalize the public service? Not necessarily. There have always been minimum uh, requirements and minimum qualifications for the people for particular jobs. There are people, of course, who might have been uh, inherited from the old order who were uh, the qualifications at that particular time were at a lower level. But what we are saying, those people tend to be given an opportunity to upgrade themselves and government helps them to upgrade themselves. But I think the biggest issue which has been added also in this, it's what we would call um, the ethical conduct mm -hmm. of some of the, the public servants on how they get committed to what they are supposed to do, the issues of fraud and corruption. and. Uh, the consciousness that they are servicing uh, the public and you're talking about the poor people, those are the issues which have also been been, been, been added as part of professionalization of, of the public service. But also uh, some of them will have to be very fair. I mean, when you interview the DGs, 
you tended to be generic, not to be specific when you're dealing with them. For instance, if you want a DG, as an example for science and, and technology, you need a person who's qualified in that particular area. And the people who have to interview those people uh, have to be experts in that particular field, helping the minister, which means even the people who are the supporting DDGs and chief directors and directors are the people who must be qualified in the field. So these are the issues which we are trying to look at uh, in trying to improve uh, the whole uh, public service and professionalizing it. And also introducing uh, what I would say, uh, continuous learning, because people must go into refresher courses. One of the biggest issues as well, I'll leave this as my last question to uh, you, Minister, as well, uh, is the public sector wage bill. We need to pay for these experts, these professionals, don't we, whether they are in their current position and they get uh, their, uh, in, in their income and their salaries reviewed or we get professionals and experts from outside to come in. They need to be paid for and you and I know very well that we're always dealing uh, with wage strikes in the country. So Finance Minister this afternoon, how, what do you want to hear from him on the public sector wage bill? Well, I think the issue of the wages is very important. Um, it will always be controversial because it's negotiated with the unions. It will always lead to the strikes and the workers have the right to strike. But uh, what we want to see from the Minister of Finance is what we would call a balancing act. Whilst we are increasing the, the salaries, like we have made an offer of 7.5, uh, to the public servants. At the same time, we are seated with a mass of 10,000, I mean 10 million unemployed people. We need to have uh, something for that to stimulate the issue of the employment. So as government, uh, we need that balance. But we must accept that. As we talk about professional public service, some of the skills are in the private sector. And uh, we are not really competitive. It means we will have to relook really at our salaries when we talk about uh, the expert in certain, in certain fields. And also one of the things which we are working on as the public service is to remove what you know as the requirement of a long service in the public service. Mm. And uh, you find that there are experts who are outside who do not necessarily have that particular uh, service. And then you can be able to recruit them. We are really looking into all those areas which we think that they are stumbling blocks for us to be able to recruit a very competent young people from outside the public service. Uh, it's good to hear you com competent young people, but it also still comes with a salary bill, doesn't it? We wait to hear what the finance minister has to say later, but that is the hopes of Tulas and Pesi, and I thank you for your time, sir, public service and administration uh, minister joining us here on ENCA.